Welcome to the Wealth Wise Show. I'm your host, the Wise Investor. Join me today as we discuss many different financial tools that can be utilized in your everyday financial life. Uh, we're, we discuss all sorts of things from financial literacy, financial education, um, just things and tips and tricks that you can utilize in your uh, financial journey. So to get started, just want to um, have this disclaimer. This information is provided as general information and is not intended to be any specific in financial or tax guidance. Before you make any financial decisions regarding your personal finance situation, you should consult a financial or tax professional to discuss your individual circumstances objectives. So keep in mind guys, this is for educational purposes only. This is not meant to be uh, for you to use as your personal financial um, advice. So I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, unless you are my client, then thank you for listening. Um, so here we go for today's episode of the Wealthwise Show. Okay, so today's episode, guys, uh, I wanted to talk about um, the different retirement plans that are out there. Now, I'm pretty sure I just lost my young core audience, but this is important. Even if you're young and growing um, in your financial journey, because I am talking about the popular 401k plans and the 403b plans. Uh, I want to talk about the differences in those and how you can utilize that to help grow your portfolio early on and some of the benefits that you can take advantage of when it comes down to taxes and things like that. So um, like I heard in, in the intro, this is uh, for educational pur- purposes only. I'm not trying to um, entice anyone to make any financial decisions or anything like that. I'm just trying to p- impart some information that can potentially help you in your financial journey. So let's go over have an overview of the 401k uh, plans and then we'll talk about the 401 or 403b and the differences are in those um, so pretty much both of these plans are considered qualified now for those of you who don't know what qualified means it means they're they have tax advantages um, so they are defined contribution plans, essentially. And what is a defined contribution plan? Uh, essentially, you know, it's a tax deferred, um, type of retirement plan that allow you to put in a fixed amount, um, of your paycheck into these accounts and the funds are intended to be for retirement. And some of these plans, not all of them, but some of them have a feature that uh, where your company will actually match whatever you contribute. So if your company offers a match on your 401k or 403b, they are essentially giving you whatever you put in there. They're putting in there too to help your retirement. So those are very good uh, things to take advantage of, especially when you're younger, when you're working years, you have a lot of working years. Um, that's a really good thing to uh, take advantage of. Um, but like I was saying, the 401ks and 403bs are tax advantage uh, contribution plans that allows you f- uh, for retirement. And the 401k, 401ks and the 403bs are relatively similar uh there are some slight differences but nine out of ten times they're, they're going to be for retirement and they're going to be tax deferred now for those of you who don't know what tax deferred means it's essentially saying you pay taxes later so instead of paying taxes on the money the growth of your accounts um when you put your uh, pre-tax dollars in there um, you pay the taxes when you withdraw. And the reason why they uh, allow you to be tax deferred because the ideal is when you retire, you'll be in a lower tax bracket and that will help you when you have to pay taxes on 
the withdrawals um, in retirement. But the good thing about tax deferment means you can actually take your contributions. Now, there is a certain amount uh, you can't you can't just, you know, put 100 percent of your check in your 401k. Like they, there are limits, but we'll get into that a little later. Uh, you can actually take some of your contributions and deduct them from your taxes. Uh, so instead of paying taxes now, well, you defer them until you get older. So that's uh, what tax deferment means. And typically, um, they're taxed as ordinary income. So, you know, whatever uh, you take out, it would be taxed like a paycheck. And like I said, the ideal is you'd be older and you'd be in a lower tax bracket. And 403Bs are very similar. Uh, the only difference is they're not for public or private corporations. Uh, private corporations are like, you know, your basic companies uh, or basic corporations. These are more designed for uh, public schools, uh, tax exempt organizations, uh, some uh, ministers uh, like governments and things like that. So, you know, those are these are basically their 401, 401ks. So, like I was saying, they're virtually kind of similar. Uh, just up instead of 401 is 403 instead of K is B. Uh, and the reason f the why they have those names is because those are the tax codes. So it's just easier just to call them by that. Um, so your 401 or 403Bs are, like I said, you know, school teachers, administrators, government employees, you know, nurses, doctors, you know, things like that. Not, um, you know, they're not going to have your, they're not going to have 401K, they have 403Bs. Uh, but there are income limits to participate in a 403B. Like I said, um, your income limits can't be more uh, than the annual limit set by the IRS. And in 2022, that was $305,000. So if you made uh, over $305,000, then, you know, uh, you can't participate in that. Um, so the the main difference is, is basically what I just said. So there's not really much. Uh, they're considered um, non or, or non or I'm sorry. They are considered, um, you know, tax deferment. You know, they can be employee sponsored. Uh, like I said, some of them can be individual sponsored. Uh, talking about four or three Bs, and you know, sometimes they offer matches, sometimes they don't. Um, but the main reason why, if you do, if you're offered a 401k plan or 403b plan, the main reason why you want to participate is like I said, they is basically a retirement account that you know you can um, use for later on in life. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of younger people, you know they have 401ks, but they just, they don't know what it is. And 401ks are a lot of times and 403bs are invested in the market. And some people don't know that. And some people do know that, but the ones who don't know that, yes, when you're participating in the 403bs and the 401ks, you're participating in the market. Um, so that's something that, you know, when you are thinking about when you get that paper that says, you know, what you should invest in, you should really look at that because if you don't, a lot of times your company will invest for you. But if you want more control over that, they have to give you options to invest in. So look over those. That's why it's important that even if you, um, you know, some people say, well, why do I need a financial advisor? I'm not rich. But you need a financial advisor because if you have a 401k, you probably don't know that, you know, hey, what the company that's managing your retirement, what they're investing in. So a financial advisor can look at that and see what exactly you are being invested in and if it's best for you for your plans for retirement. And sometimes they might advise you, not all the time, sometimes they might advise you like, hey, 
instead of investing in a 401k, why not just invest in an individual retirement uh, account, a IRA? Um, and if you meet the income limits, um, then why not a Roth IRA? And so those are uh, important reasons why you would want a financial advisor, even if you're not wealthy, uh, because it doesn't matter what you go come through, you're going to need some money uh, for something. And if you are working, you need to start having things in place so you can uh, make sure you do exactly what you want to do uh, for your retirement. Um, so pretty much uh, with 401ks, you can, you know, uh, invest in them. You can, you know, have matching. And a lot of times I tell people to, uh, some of my clients, if you have matching, you should really take advantage of that. So if my client, let's say, come to me and say that, you know, hey, um, my employer wants to match whatever my contributions are for my 401k or 403b. And then I say, well, how much are you putting in there? And they say, well, I put in like 1%. So that means their employer is going to be putting in like 1% of their check. And so my thing is like, okay, can you maybe, you know, cut some stuff out? Can you, you know, if you got a good job and you're not living paycheck to paycheck, can you maneuver some stuff around that way you can contribute more to your 401k to the limit that your employer has? So sometimes they say, hey, we will contribute up to like 5% or 3% or whatever you do then go up to that limit if you can. That way you're maxing out that avenue for your retirement. And a lot of times people don't know this too. In certain situations, you know, you can utilize your 401k early uh, or your retirement plan early. Like let's say you have a medical emergency or you get disabled, you know, things like that. You can use your retirement early for things like that. And if you are maxing out your retirement accounts, your 401k, your 403b with the matching. Now you're pretty much, you know, limiting the, or, you know, speeding up the time it takes to build a retirement portfolio. And also you can also roll over those accounts to a retirement account, an individual retirement account. If you wanted to, you don't necessarily have to, but you can. Um, and sometimes you can roll those over, roll the funds over into a uh, Roth 401k plan, uh, which is made with after tax dollars. Um, so, and so you got to understand when you are rolling over uh, qualified money, by the way, I should preface this. You, you can't just, you know, you can't take advantage of the tax deferment if you go with a Roth. So, um, cause Roths are made with after tax dollars. So I just want to, you know, put that disclaimer out, out there. Um, but there are things you can do to m maneuver around. And that's why it's important to talk to a financial advisor or a financial planner, uh, because they can find you the best avenue for you to go down when it comes down to your retirement. So, uh, 401ks and 403bs, uh, are, like I said, you know, very simple things. Um, they are basically retirement plans and they're virtually the same. They're not a hundred percent the same, but they're pretty close to being the same. You know, if you get a check, they're going to take out money before you are taxed and put it in there. And then once you get to retirement age and you start taking money out, then you get taxed as ordinary income. Pretty simple. And if your company or your employer offers matching, meaning you know, whatever you put in there, whatever percent you put in there, they will match up to a certain percent. Then you do the same um, and or they do the same. So, you know, that would be great for people who want to quickly. Or I shouldn't say quickly, but they want to speed up um, their retirement. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I do want to talk a little bit about I don't want to say that. Well, I guess the penalties. Um, and the, the rules of 401ks and 403bs. 
So there are retirement accounts. And right now, currently in 2023, the retirement age is 59 and a half. So if you're not 59 and a half, then withdrawing any money from your retirement accounts is subject to a 10% early withdrawal penalty in addition to income tax. So keep that in mind. Like, you know, if you just taking money out to loan it to a cousin or something like that, and you're not 59 and a half, then you got to pay ordinary income taxes on it. And uh, put, uh, you're subject up to a 10% fee. And that goes for retirement accounts, <laughs> not just a 401k, not just a 403b. Uh, you're talking about the Roth. Are you talking about the Roth IRA, the Roth 401k, the regular IRA, um, all those things, um, you know, carry that penalty. Now, there are some differences for um, when it comes down to a 401k and a individual retirement account, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, but also one of the things that one of the questions that I get asked a lot well, you know, hey, if I leave my job, what happens to my 401k? Well, there are typically uh, a few options that they'll give you. So you can do one or two things, or not one or two things, you can do a few things. You can withdraw the money. And keep in mind what I just said earlier, that if you're 59, or if you're not 59 and a half, you're subject to that 10% early uh, penalty and income tax. Um, so, you know, you, you can do that or you can roll the money into, like I said, a IRA uh, or you can leave the money in your uh, previous employer's plan uh, or if the, your new employer offers a 401k plan, you can move that money to your new employer's plan. Uh, so, like I said, there's a few things you can do with these retirement accounts. Uh, nine out of ten times, I recommend, uh, depending, like let's say your old employer offers matching. So, they will give you money for, you know, uh, doing participating in the retirement plan. And your new employer does not. Well, you could just roll it over into a individual retirement account, save money on fees, and pretty much do it yourself. Uh, or you can have a uh, your advisor or your money manager do it for you as well. Like I can set up um, for my clients 403Bs and 401Ks, um, but I can also set up individual retirement accounts um, and Roth um, accounts for them if they need to. And, you know, I'll be de deciding or, you know, helping them figure out the best decision to make in a situation like that. But there is flexibility. And if you don't have an advisor, then how do you know, you know, what can you do and what can't you not do? So um, I want to talk a little bit, up, well, not a little bit. I really want to talk about the bulk of Roth IRAs and um, individual or regular traditional, well, there you go, traditional IRAs. Um, and they're really, really useful. So one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is you can have a 401k, you can have a 4013B, or for, let's just say 4013B. Uh, you can have a 401k and a 403B. Um, not saying you can have both of them at the same time because you're going to be, well, technically, okay, I don't want to get into the techness. Yes, you can have different those different accounts, but you can also have a traditional or a Roth IRA to add. So let's say you, you know, uh, your employer doesn't offer, um, you know, if your employer doesn't offer a 401k plan, then, you know, you can get a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. So let's start with the traditional IRA. So like I said, if you wanted to, yes, you can do your traditional IRA and you can do your 401k. Uh, they're both provide, uh, tax deferral benefits. 
So if you have a, a traditional retirement account and you put money in there, then you can deduct those deduct those. You can deduct that income or that money uh, from your current year's taxes. And then when you withdraw the money after you, in your retirement, then once again, it'll be taxed as ordinary income. And some people might say, well, OK, well, that sounds like a lot of savings for retirement. And it's important to start thinking about it, uh, especially if you're getting offered the ability to save for it. And the reason being is some like people have been living a lot longer than normal. And what I mean by normal, I mean, like, you know, we're, we're seeing people who live up to their 90s to 100 and as they're living longer, you know, they're limited by what they can do for income. So the retirement accounts are really important because let's say, you know, you're 65 and you retired at 60. And let's say five years into retirement, you know, you only save, well, let's say $50,000. And so that means if you only save $50,000, that means you only can live off of $10,000 a year. But you what happen you live until you're 70 and that's usually what happens to a lot of people who are or don't take their retirement seriously and then you start seeing them have to go back to work and things like that to you know make ends meet so keep in mind when you're retired you don't have any income unless you save for it so when you your last day of work and you're the next day is going to be retirement you're not going to get paid from your job because you're not working there anymore so whatever you saved up in your years of working it's all you got to live off on so a lot of people do have a 401k and a ira because they're they want to build that savings now could you if your company offers a 401k participate in it you know, I can't tell you, I can't make no recommendations because this is for educational purposes. Um, but think about it. If you're being offered a 401k and especially if it's batches, you know, they do majority of the work for you. All you got to do is just do your job and they take it out for you. Um, but once you get to a certain age, you know, once you're getting, I would say getting close to retirement, then you might want to think about, you know, hey, maybe I should you know, add more to my retirement now. So you don't have to, you know, go out at like 20 and then fill up your 401k and fill up your retirement account. You don't have to do that. Uh, if your company offers a 401k, then that should be good for a little bit, or I should say a little bit, should be good with the majority uh, of your working years. And then think about, talk to your advisor on when it's time uh, for you to open up a individual retirement account, talk to them and say, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm nearing, uh, 35, I'm nearing 40, you know, I got a couple of kids, um, you know, they're still young. Um, by the time I retire, they're going to be still teenagers or whatever. Um, you know, I'm going to need something and then your advisor can advise you. So a lot, like I said, a lot of people have the traditional IRAs and the Roth IRAs. Um, but what is, a Roth IRA, like, okay, you, you said that a traditional IRA is, is an investment retirement account or an individual retirement account that you can use for investments and things like that. Then what is a Roth? So put simply, a Roth IRA is the, is, is the mo one of the most recommended things to a lot of clients um, because you put money in there with after tax dollars. So you get your paycheck, they took their taxes out, and now this is money after tax money. Like, you know, like I said, they took the taxes out. Then you take whatever you feel comfortable with up to the income, or up to the limits that you can contribute, and you put that into your Roth IRA. And let's say you put it into some equities and they appreciate. So when you take your withdrawals in retirement, it is tax free. 
and that tax deferred tax free. You don't pay no taxes on it. Um, so, and the reason being is because you pay the taxes up front. So if you're young, um, and think about it like this, if you're young and you get a check, you see, they take out taxes and you take whatever is left over and put it into income or Roth, they're not going to tax you on that because they already taxed you on it. See what I'm saying? And the important thing about this is that means when you take your withdrawals, that is tax free. And remember what I said, you know, you can invest in certain things, certain assets and things like that. And when they appreciate. So, you know, that is something to really think about and talk to your advisors about. Um, but we love Roths uh, because why not? Now, because Roths are so good, there are limits. So as of right now, in 2023, uh, when this uh, podcast episode is being recorded, single filers, um, their, um, their their income must be less than a hundred and fifty three thousand. Um, so you know you you must have, um, you know. Less than we well, should. <laughs> if you're making one hundred and fifty-three thousand, you know that's a lot. But uh, you're basically, and by the way, that's off of the modified adjusted growth income. Uh, you probably see that on your um, taxes. You know, they say AGI and things like that. So I should probably preface that. Um, but yes, so if you have a uh, you know a, a AGI of less than um, 153,000, then you can contribute. Um, and, but contributes, uh, do start phasing out, um, with a AGI of 138,000. So that's still pretty good for a single filer. Uh, if you're a married couple, it's 222 or 228,000. Uh, and once again, is they start phasing out, um, the contributions phase out starting, at 218,000. So what that basically means is, you know, they will, your contributions will get lower the more money you make until you hit that threshold. Um, and one of the things about the traditional IRAs is they have a minimum distribution requirement. So what does that mean? So basically you are required to take out uh, distributions when you um, have a traditional IRA. And I believe uh, it starts um, at 73 years old. So I know that's older. So I, mean, I know people are like, well, but some people got 401ks, you know, other accounts, other brokerages that they are taking money from social security and they might not have a lavish lifestyle and, but they still have a, a traditional IRA. And so that is why, yes, you can get up to 73 without touching your IRA. If you, you know, really saved up for retirement, but you have to take out uh, money once you reach that age uh, by April 1st, following the year you hit 73. So sometimes people don't want to do that. They're like, you know, I, I don't have a lavish lifestyle. I don't need more income and I don't want to just be taking money out just because, uh, especially if it's in investments and things like that. Uh, I don't want to have to do that. But the thing about the Roth IRAs, there is no required minimum distributions. Uh, so, you know, you can withdraw the money whenever you want. Um, and you know, that's great because, you know, you, if you have beneficiaries who are on your Roth IRA, which spoiler alert, you can have beneficiaries, uh, meaning, you know, if you are saving money up in these different accounts and you get to an age to where, you know, you probably need to go into a, a home or something like that, assisted living home and you want to leave your kids and your grandkids or something, well, a Roth IRA is nice because you don't have to take out the distributions and 
guess what else? Well, they don't have to, they don't owe taxes on the withdrawal because you pay the taxes up front. Um, so you can, so typically what typically will happen is for your business fiduciaries though, that's why I said it's important to talk to your advisors. Um, you know, they are, they would have to roll over the account into, you know, they'll have to roll over the account. So the account, it can't be in your name, but they're taking money out. So that's not how that works. Um, but that is important because, you know, if you're, you know, want to transfer wealth, that's a big thing. They is ideal as a vehicle for that. So, uh, basically the key differences of a traditional and a Roth IRA is they provide generous tax breaks. And I know some people might be like, well, I pay my taxes. Well, no one's saying you don't pay your taxes because you, obviously if you're paying for retirement, you are financially wise and you are financially wise enough to pay your taxes. But that doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the things that are being offered to you because you worked so hard for however long you've been working up until your retirement. So this is more like a gift for you that, hey, you're about to retire or you're going to be retiring eventually at some point in time and you worked hard. We're going to ease that burden for you so you can, you know, kick back, put your feet up, go buy a beach house or something and sip mimosas and drink margaritas uh, watching the sunset. So those are basically gifts to retirees. So it's important to understand that your 401ks, your 413bs, your Roth IRAs, and your traditional IRAs are really important tools for financial education and financial wealth. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to say financial wealth, but you know, for living essentially is important part of your financial health. How about that? Financial health. I like that. Um, so like I said, you know, they're excellent tax breaks for both the traditional and Roth IRAs. Um, but the traditional is pre tax dollars, meaning you haven't paid the taxes on them, but you're going to pay them when you're older. Um, when you, you know, have to start taking withdrawals and a Roth, you put money in there after you pay the taxes. And then when you take your withdrawals, the taxes are your tax free. Um, so those are really nice. Um, the traditional do have a requirement to withdraw money, uh, at a certain age. Um, the Roth do not. So that's nice. Uh, but the Roth do have income limits uh, where, you know, if you make a certain amount of money, you probably you're not going to be allowed to take advantages of those um, provisions. Um, now, if you do want to withdraw your money early, this it goes for a lot of things. You know, if you become permanently disabled, you know, you can uh, you don't have to worry about that, uh, you know, penalty and things like that, because, you know, there's a reason behind it. You're not just doing it just because, um, if you pass away, you know, that's another one, but the money is given to whoever is on your beneficiary, which is important guys, please make sure you have beneficiaries on all your accounts, your bank accounts, your, uh, brokerage accounts, your retirement accounts, anything when it has to do with money and accounts, make sure you have a beneficiary on all of those accounts. Um, so, um, like I said, and you can use the money up to, uh, 10,000 bucks maximum for a first time home purchase. So you can do that as well. Um, but if you have the account less than five years, that's another thing. Um, let's say you got the account when you're 59 and a half. Well, you have to have the account for at least five years. But let's say you did have it for five years, you know, then you can take withdrawals and avoid those penalties when you're 59 and a half. Uh, like I said, disability or financial hardships. Uh, you can, you know, when your beneficiary make withdrawals, um, you can first time home um, purchase and certain medical costs. Uh, so let's get down to the contribution limits. 
So as of right now, the 2023 contribution limits are 6500 or $6,500, but they do give you a nice little gift if you're older and you're trying to play catch up. They actually call it the catch up revision where you can put in an extra thousand dollars a year. So this is six thousand five hundred dollars a year. You can contribute to your Roth or your traditional. But if you're over 50, if you're 50 or older, you can contribute up to seven thousand five hundred dollars. So that's a nice little extra to kind of speed that along. And once again, you know, because the Roth IRA and a traditional IRA are individual retirement accounts, you know, they see them as individual retirement accounts. So if you have a Roth and a traditional, you can't put 65 and 65. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You can't put $6,500 or $6,500 in one and then get another one. And no, it's for all individual retirement accounts. And we're not talking about 401ks and 403bs. We're talking about individual retirement accounts. Um, and there are income limits with the Roth. Um, but anyone with earned income can contribute to a traditional uh, and it'd be on a tax deferred basis. So that's nice. Um, there are no age limits on contributions. So if you know you want to start young, like 16 saving, you can start that. Um, you know, they got savers tax credit, which, you know, talk to your tax providers about it. I'm not a CPA or anything like that. So I don't know the tax code that well, but I know enough to know that these are uh, great tools. Um, where the Roth, there's no tax deductions, but you get tax-free earnings when you withdraw. Now with the traditional, there are tax deductions, but you pay ordinary income on withdrawals. So that's not terrible. Um, and for Roth contributions, um, can be withdrawn during the tax anytime during the tax year, tax free, penalty free. If you have five years after your first con contribution, and or you are fifty nine and a half, um, so that's nice. And your earnings withdrawals are tax free too. With your traditional. Uh, withdrawals, you know, the penalty free, it starts at 59 and a half. So you got to wait until 59 and a half to withdraw, which is fine. Uh, there are no requirement uh, minimum distributions on the Roth, but they are on uh, the traditional. So that's pretty much um, it. You know, if you want, you can contribute to both uh, as long as you meet those requirements. And remember, you can only contribute up to the max across all accounts, not just one and one. And also too, uh, if you are married, that's a little thing that people don't know too. They say you're married, you can uh, open up an account with your spouse or for your spouse and contribute too. Um, so if your spouse is, um, you know, stay at home mom or something like that, you know, you can contribute for your spouse uh, up to the contribution limits. But one of the things that people that got to understand is, you know, let's say that means you can contribute uh, up to, I believe, $13,000. Um, so even if you contribute up to $13,000, you can't contribute $10,000 to your Roth uh, and then, you know, $3,000 to her Roth. That, that's not how that works. It's still got to be within those limits. And if you're over 50, same thing, but you still got to be in those limits on each account. So even though you can provide for your spouse um, when it comes down to opening up them a retirement account, you still, once again, got to make sure you're within those limits uh, or else you're going to have to withdraw the money. Like they say you put in 10,000 and the limits are 65. You're going to have to withdraw money um, to get it back down to that 65. Um, and like I said, this is over a year, a tax year. So you don't have to put $6,500 immediately. You can just put $100 here, $50 there and whatnot, and then have, you can self-direct it or you can have your advisors direct it for you. Uh, so this has been a long one. Uh, so hopefully this makes sense and you guys uh, gain some wisdom. Um, and I, I'm really glad this is episode eight, I believe. Uh, I do have like topical episodes that I put out 
but this is episode eight of the actual show. Um, so that's nice. And I appreciate it. I am slowly getting better. So I appreciate it with all the mistakes and the ums and the, you know, rambling. Sometimes we're working out the kinks and eventually we're going to have a product that will be extremely nice for everybody. Um, so guys, I appreciate you coming along this journey with me about retirement. Um, if you have any questions or any topics you want me to answer uh, or talk about, feel free to hit me up on my social medias um, on the Wealthwise Show on Instagram um, and on our YouTube channel, the Wealthwise Show. And I know this is uh, a you know a bunch of episodes in, and there's no videos on. Uh, that's because I'm recording a lot of these episodes in batches. Um, because they're typically, you know, about certain things, not news events. Um, and my background for my video equipment, anything like that is coming in. So eventually, you know, maybe my topical videos will have, or my topical episodes will have videos added along with it that you can watch on YouTube. But as of right now on YouTube, it's just going to be audio only, but you know, with our nice logo. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Spotify or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Like uh, five stars if you got some valuable information. Um, and I appreciate all the support. And yeah, that's it. So that's going to be it, guys. I appreciate it. And i see you guys in the next one. Investment advisory and financial planning services offered through Simplicity Wealth and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Sub advisory services are provided by Simplicity Solutions LLC, a registered investment advisor. Any insurance, consulting, and education services offered through the Webfly Show. The Webfly Show is not affiliated with Simplicity Wealth and Simplicity Solutions.